So yeah, yeah. I'll keep an eye on the questions in the chat box if anyone wants to type any questions there or just jump on webcam. Mm -hmm. So but go right ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. Feel free to ask any questions. So thanks so much, Eddie, for inviting us to uh, speak at your webinar. So it's our webinar's title is The Art of Blending 2D and 3D Animation and Making a Short Film. So the basically, we made a short film for our graduation, uh, which is 2D and 3D animation elements. Um, yeah. All right, so we can watch our work in progress film. Just so you know, it's still work in progress. There's some scenes that are missing and some things that are not fully rendered out, but I hope you enjoy it all the same. Do you have time? Can we play across the bridge? Just go away. Dare set foot on my bridge. Getting through you will be a piece of cake. Ha! How foolish.
to make this film, we had like a few concerns that like we didn't have enough resources. So we did a little Kickstarter to kick it off. Um, so basically we um, made a bit of merch because we realized that people uh, are more willing to donate a certain amount of money if they know they'll get something back for it. But usually they only get the small things. And then we put a little like budget breakdown so they know what we're using the money for. And then it was really cool because we got a few people teamed up to work on like prop modeling and environment modeling. Right. Do you want to yeah. click into the link or? Uh, well, we can do it if we have time later. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I'll just start like with the very beginning steps. So from beginning to end of how we made the film. Uh, so we start off with like a lot of character designs variations and stuff, trying to figure out how we want the characters to look like. And um, so this is like a final model sheet for the, the 2D sister. And this is the final model sheet for the little brother in 2D. And then we did a lot of um, different color palettes and stuff. And here's some of the examples where we already settled on a clothing design for them. Um, but we just wanted to um, we just wanted to uh, get the colors right as well. So we settled on this, the middle one for the sister and then the very far left for the little brother because he's also a red panda in the game as well. And then for the goat warrior, we knew we wanted her to be like a mix of um, uh, like human and animal. So we went through a couple different animal variations and the walrus would have been the best as everyone can tell. Um, but we went for the goat instead and this is like a little idea of how her armor could look like is there anything else you want to add to it no no yeah, yeah. and then this is like the final uh turnaround for the goat warrior so her body turned more into like a sheep than a goat but that's fine <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then this is like a posed version. So this one, we also have a turnaround, like a turntable later that we can show you. And then for the gatekeeper, this one actually went through a lot of different iterations because um, we did well, like, sometimes the child would make something and then we both thought it might need a few improvements. And then look, do you want to like talk about your process of how you made oh, this yeah. one? So like the bottom ones were like, kind of like me like freestyling it. Like, see what kind of, like, anatomy works, what kind of forms works. But, like, I was struggling a lot. So, like, eventually we kind of, like, uh, Alicia kind of did this, like, upper one kind of design for me. And then we were going to do also, like, a centaur, but figure that's a little bit too complicated. So we took out the, the kind of, like, the quadruped at the bottom and then just make, like, a bipedal creature on the right. So this is kind of like the final silhouette in the shape of the design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is uh this is like the T pose with like kind of this is like kind of like really late later on stage with the fur and then the shading on, the texture on. It's like the pose. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then his eyes used to uh, also went through a few iterations. They used to be blue. Or they used to not glow at all, and then yeah. they were glowing, and it was it was a lot of like back and forth with uh, the gatekeeper design. But it was also the one that you modeled the fastest, right? Yeah, because like <laughs> we were running out of time, and I was like, okay, I need to get this design out as soon as possible. So like it was like finished like the modeling, and then like the detailing was like everything was done like really fast. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, that was cool. And then the rip handed design was one that I was really. Uh, passionate about i really wanted to to nail this one because um sometimes you'll see like really cute characters but it looks really creepy in cg so i wanted to make it cute but also look really cute in cg as well so we put a lot of effort into making this this design and also we, i made a clay sculpt for it so i can actually go get it real quick so this is um I made this so that it's easier for Chow to like follow, follow along and like model it out. And the, the only problem was like these scruffs because I modeled it in clay. But obviously, if it's a CG model, that'll all be like mesh and then fur coming out of it. So we had to kind of figure out what the form was underneath that. 
And then this is the final model, which is super cute in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and then for their weapons, um, we kind of just went, <laughs> went with like any kind of idea we had because we didn't have a lot of time to uh, do iterations. We had a really tight schedule. So um, especially because he needs to, uh, Goody needs to finish the models before I can animate them. And then uh, like, it took a long time to make them, but it also took a long time to animate them. So we went through a lot of like updating and, uh, and we couldn't do it with the weapons at all. Yeah, and then so this is a final render of him posed. Um, Chloe has a question for you. Um, yeah. These models look awesome, she said. Do you guys uh, use XGen for the fur? I'm not you sure. That. Is that oh, like uh, <laughs> uh, we use Yeti um, only because, like, uh, uh, we know, like, later on for the animation, uh, we're just going to do some crazy stretching and stuff, and then the character is going to be, like, really nimble and fast. So uh, I know that Yeti simulation is a lot more stable and more user-friendly, so that's why we went for Yeti. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does, but, that, does yeah. that answer the question? Yeah. And the one thing you need to know is that um, uh, Yeti is not, you can't use it in the US, so if you want to render it, you have to render with a farm in Canada. How come you can't use it in the US? Um, I don't know. For some reason, they're blacklisted. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's blacklisted, but we're just not supported. Yeah, for some reason, like any any like we can't use Yeti at Scanline because um, all of our computers are in LA. But uh, some companies who have their computers local, they can use Yeti, like Icon. Yeah, yeah, Yeti. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is pretty cool. All right, thank you. You can check it out, and the simulation is actually really smooth compared to X. Am I right? Yeah, well, if you like, well, if you're a first time user. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We'll have a few more slides on the, on the fur later on as well. Oh, does it work? Okay, and then so um, for the credits, we wanted to be kind of like pixel art. So we gave uh, Francesco our final renders, and then this is the character designs he came up for the, um, for the credits, which is really cute. Super cute. <laughs> <laughs> They're adorable, yeah. And then, so now we're getting to some of the environment designs, which are also like very quickly done. So this one's like really quickly sketched out um, Sunny, the little brother's room. We knew he, we wanted to be a little bit playful, so he has a boat as a bed and stuff. And um, and then I also knew I was going to do that camera move in 2D, so I wanted to have a, some something I could reference, which is why Phoebe modeled this um, 3D room on my design and then for the game environment which was kind of tricky because we wanted it to be kind of um fantasy but also not too difficult to model because a lot of our designs it involved a lot of cities which we didn't want to uh, go through but we also wanted to, to have trees in it which was um ended up going for was kind of like a city built on a tree but um again was the problem with the city and we didn't want to model the whole city and render out the whole city yeah, it was like really heavy the, the scale of what we were going for is a little bit too ambitious so we have to like kind of like <laughs> yeah so in the end this is kind of what we went for like a dragon uh that is made out of wood that is holding a bridge which is why our film is called across the bridge <laughs> yeah and then um actually Oh. Here. Some really loud noises. Is that just is that just on our side? Yeah, here no, we you. have it too. Sorry? No, we have it here too. Sorry? Here in yeah, Germany, yeah. these noises also exist. Oh, okay. Maybe someone's got there. Oh well, can you guys still hear us though? Yes, no problem. Okay, that's good. Then, uh, then I'll just continue talking. So, for the gatekeeper, if you um, remember his design, he was like, he had bull's feet and then like bull horns. So we wanted his theme to be more like bull related. So there's, um, for his throne, there's like these horns here. 
And then you'll see later on, on, on the temples, there's also horns all over the temples. So here's the final model and texture that um, was done by Rex, one of Goody's friends. And then Giuseppe, which is, who's I think here in the webinar, he modeled out um, the dragon and the temple, which we will see later on as well. So this is kind of like mock-up of our um, environment. And some of the color palettes that we were looking for, we were doing like red and, or like warm and cold contrast, but the color palette changed a lot throughout the film, right? like yeah. the, with the lighting and everything. You can jump to whatever you want to say. <laughs> <Okay. something. laughs> I talk a lot. So here's also more of our um, concept art of the temple and shrine. We took a lot of um, reference from East Asian, like temples and, and shrines and environment in general. And then the next one, the so whenever we actually had these modeled out by uh, Giuseppe and Teresa, and whenever they did a version, they could send it in and then we'll like draw over it and uh, like say what we think could be changed. And then they did the final, um, final models, which are here. And Goody also did some texturing on these. Yeah, so you can see that there's like horn up here and another horn up here. So that's just supposed to like, bind in with the gatekeeper himself so you can tell that it's his um his area of of war warfare <laughs> anyway <laughs> so like just we had a lot of like uh ambition for our first idea do you want to like go through like what we did with the props and everything the props yeah so uh, like, like the, this mm -hmm. one um so like we were gonna have like skeletons army at, for the like the first act mm -hmm. but we eventually took it out so but like i already modeled out the skeletons so mm -hmm. i figured like hey we can use it for props we can just use it for like set dressing you know like set mm -hmm. up the scene and stuff yeah yeah so you can like one of the, yeah yeah so you can see these um skeletons all around the film they're kind of just um, they're, yeah, decoration <laughs> or people or like the characters are falling into them or something. And then this is more um, or like char ex character accessories. Mm -hmm. And then this like it's really real somehow. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And then uh, this is like uh, lanterns. <laughs> oh, yeah. Question. Oh, uh, no, I just thought I heard a voice as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, th I thought that was the question, too. <laughs> My bad. Uh, yeah, like, for, for our props, like, as you can see, like, like we all, all also want to try to, like, put in some, like, Eastern Asia, like, elements, like, really or or like, ornamental, ornamentals, mm -hmm. like, like, these, like, uh, symbols and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, this one, like, Alicia designed it. It's, like, a, basically, it's, like, a calligraphy of, like, a goat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some little subtle hints. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, or or these lanterns. Yeah. And what does that say on the? That's list? like that's like demon basically. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. These are like um, also like props, accessories, mm -hmm. and then this this cannon. Um, the, the concept was done by uh, T D Chu. It's it's like a. A dude that I found on our station. I was like, "Oh, this kind of looks really cool." I really want to use his concept and then like transfer it into like a, a three D model. So that's what I did. I asked him if I can use his concept, and he's like, "Yes." And mm -hmm. yeah. And then this warhammer is for a gatekeeper, and then he's like, "This is supposed to be like the spawning uh, object." For the goat warrior, like she will like spawn from this like little sculpture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So how long had it taken from concept to this stage at this point? Like a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Oh. Including Kickstarter as well, or is that after Kickstarter? Yeah. So uh, what we did before the Kickstarter in the Kickstarter was um, during the summertime. Sorry, did, is there a question? Okay, so um, basically, I think someone's uh, mic is. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Got it. I was trying to understand the question. 
Um, but um, in the fall, we started with the concept art and, and then started modeling it, right? And then yeah. we only had the final models done at the end of fall semester, yeah, right? Which would much. be which would be like three months. Three months. Yeah. yeah. So it it was it was a little. It took a little longer because. Um, we'd get we'd present it in class and then we'd get feedback and we had to like iterate it and then sometimes like like still in the industry as well people will uh give feedback like two months after it's done yeah it'll be like <laughs> we have like this these two months where this model is all fine and then mm -hmm. suddenly uh like they'll want to change it yeah. <laughs> yeah so we so that's why it took a little longer but yeah. um but i think it was like like if you if we just went with one design and one go you could have probably done it in a month yeah but i think it's like really good practice mm. like because like later on in the industry or even like working with people like you know people keep changing ideas yeah for sure stuff, it's like, yeah yeah so you can like always you know keep practicing mm -hmm. yeah uh, vivek had a question from the chat box um yeah just wondering how many iterations did the story go through um, and what were your major sources of inspiration? Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Story and visual and... Yeah, so maybe for visual first, like, I, I don't know if you can tell with, um, with this one, we have a little bit of inspiration from Kung Fu Panda, even for the little red panda, we have a little bit of inspiration from that film. We yeah. just really like the aesthetics of it. So we took a... We did that. And then for the story iterations, we actually had a big story going when we were in third year, so half a year before we started the film. But we ended up scrapping that story because it was a little too complicated or too unrelatable. It wasn't like something people see in everyday life. So um, we went through, I think, like two major story iterations. Right. And then as we went along, the story kept changing a little bit. Like we had like a few characters that were taken out because they were just not really necessary. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. And then I think like more importantly, like we eventually want to make a short film that is like both relate to us. Mm -hmm. Like we we both have like siblings. Yeah. We we play video games and mm -hmm. you know we fight with the siblings, but like we, we always like love them eventually. Mm -hmm. So like that's that's like I think one thing that everything everyone can relate. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, that's why we eventually went for this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And but even after we settled on the story, like we had to be open to changing our minds or like change uh, other people giving us feedback and changing the story a little bit here and there. Yeah, it, but in the end, I think it became a relatively concise storyline. <laughs> it was very, very messy in the beginning. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it does. Okay, sweet. I had a Kung Fu Panda about it, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah all the fight sequences and all that. <laughs> but uh, not nearly as amazing, which uh, we, we hope to get there someday. <laughs> you almost familiar. All right, so um, here we're going to like the modeling stage, right? Yeah, yeah just like, cause I I should have document more, but like like I just found some some like scrap mm -hmm. from my drive to put it on. So these are just some inspiration I went like from base model to like detailing. You can see like from like spaghetti <laughs> spaghetti fingers or like, like defined hands. Uh, and then, like the one we talked with, uh, talked about before, the the, <laughs> the gatekeeper from before to like, like the the final one. Mm -hmm. We had like three heads before, but like we took it out. And the anatomy completely changed. Yeah, anatomy changed too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, didn't have I don't have much model, model image for the red hand though. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of how it looks like. So in you started in ZBrush, right? You'd sculpt it and then you retopple in Maya, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll start base mesh in mm -hmm. Maya and then bring it in in ZBrush and then do the major change and mm -hmm. stuff and then bring it back to uh, Maya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then for rigging, 
Um, well, you did all the rigging you could talk about. Well, yeah. So for the gatekeeper, um, the rigging part, uh, I use Event Skeleton um, because it was just like a lot faster. Uh, we didn't have much time. Um, for people who don't know, Advanced Skeleton is like someone put it out and you can, like how I understand is you can basically like put it into your model and it's it got it has already a lot of the like built in things that you need for rigging like like IK FK switch got the, all the joints going yeah and stuff right but it doesn't necessarily have like for example in animation you want this character to change like COG mm. or to have like stretchy stretchiness mm. it doesn't necessarily have that mm -hmm. it, yeah it depends on what kind of like uh uh, uh like rigging rigging plugin you have maybe some like we didn't much research on that mm -hmm. yeah but it's customizable right so you can build on top of the basic yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. like uh it's a little bit complicated because like you open up the like for example the node editor and it's like like a big graph <laughs> it, it might get a little bit overwhelming if you don't know much about like uh rigging mm -hmm. yeah but it's definitely like you you smash together like this one with double arms and then the goat warrior did like quadruped plus human right um so. yeah that's another thing about events skeleton is like when i did the goat warrior uh, goat warrior one um what happened is like uh the upper body and then the quadruped body didn't uh, wasn't compatible for some reason it doesn't merge correctly so that's when i have to like customize uh uh, the go warrior rig so like I I rig the upper body and then kind of just like merge it with the lower body mm -hmm. yeah that, mm -hmm. but yeah it does have like the option to like let you customize it mm -hmm. yeah uh, Rima has a question for your mm -hmm. keeper rig um, were there any complications rigging the keeper that weren't there for the other characters any communication like uh was there anything was, um, yeah anything different so any uh anything that popped up that is usually uh that wasn't there for like say a normal human biped character or mm -hmm. um for the gatekeeper the gatekeeper was actually quite smooth mm -hmm. like you know it just like had two extra like two extra arms otherwise than that it, it works pretty much like a human characters mm. um the hard part was the modeling because um it, it's not a like a regular humanoid not a regular human uh anatomy and like i have to like kind of figure out uh like the edge flows of of the the extra arms how the an anatomy should 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 rest on mm -hmm. the on you know like if this two extra arms need like shoulders or like extra chest and stuff mm -hmm. yeah but like rigging in terms of rigging it was just like more about adding two extra arms mm -hmm. yeah yeah does that answer the question uh yeah it does okay yeah, sweet yeah. yeah so the facial rig was also advanced skeleton right yeah yeah, yeah. and this one actually worked quite well yeah i'd say yeah yeah i just need a lot of skin waiting yeah mm -hmm. and then um for the red panda you actually did custom rig which right. was two weeks of complete hell <laughs> three, weeks. <laughs> three weeks oh no because uh, yeah okay. you want to talk about it no no you can you can blame me for everything no <laughs> <laughs> so what happened is like uh before we start the film like we have like this red panda characters and then alicia is like uh like she has some like special requests she wants she wanted to be like super stretchy super like nimble and she wants to like be able to have the rig to be able to have like change of like like uh pivot mm -hmm. a lot of fk switch fk ik switch from head to arms to like like legs mm -hmm. and then i was like really confident i was like yes i can do that that was like a piece of cake <laughs> And then, like second week into rigging, it was like instant regret that like you know like we really wanted to like let like I really wanted to let uh, Alicia to have like the freedom to like like anime like. That's sweet. 
<laughs> but like for other two characters, because it was a Ben skeleton, it, it was a little bit more like restricted, right? Like mm, a little, a little yeah. Uh oh. I think their connection was lost. Let me uh, message him. Well, are we still there? Oh, wait, we lost you for a second. Oh, are no, we okay. Are we back? Yeah, yeah, you're back now. Okay. Phew. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Are we still screen sharing? Can you still see our screen? Well, it's back to Zoom. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Let me uh, do that real quick. Share. Like that? Is that good? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Sweet. All right. So, sorry about that. Um, but, yeah. So, this is more about the, the custom rig for Red Panda. So, we have, like, all the stretchy limbs and everything. And then both legs and arms can go to IK and FK because uh, he, he could either run on four legs or on two legs. And then the facial rig is actually advanced skeleton, right? That you put on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's really cool. And um, <laughs> you're some like rig poses <laughs> and tests. Yeah, and the, the tail is really funny. We got an attitude in the bottom right. Yeah, look at that. Sassy. <laughs> <laughs> Some attitude. <laughs> Sassitude. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So, actually, for all the characters, the facial, like, skin weighting was very difficult, right? Yeah, yeah. There's, like, a lot of, uh, like, Alicia sending it back to me and, like, have to fix it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Because, like, when you see, like, uh, industry rigs, like, they have a lot of, like, edge loops around the mouth and everything. And then they deform really well like i don't know how they do it but somehow they like deform and then they push things but it was really difficult because um i think we didn't, like, mm -hmm. yeah i think it was just like we didn't have enough edge loops like poly counts mm -hmm. was were a little bit low mm -hmm. like you can see like this one uh the left second left one you can see the forehead there's a little bit of like edge kind of edge bumping out mm. that was that was because like we didn't have enough like edge oh, okay. edge flow to crash it in yeah yeah, so, yeah. sometimes it's... like the models like kind of will, will like cause trouble to mm -hmm. like later on pipeline mm -hmm. yeah and then like sometimes when you smile or when the character smile it'll like pinch in into itself or like the lip will like kind of lift off it, it did some funny things but like a lot of things we could like fake it was like animate to the camera and no one will ever know that it was a problem but um yeah and then this is the uh also she went through a lot of like i think goat warrior was the one that had the most problems right yeah yeah rig wise, rig rigging wise. and then you could see how her her shoulder was like it, it used to be a lot worse with the shoulder and the arms mm -hmm. and the one of the arms is like kind of fucked like you can't put it into fk <laughs> <laughs> Oops, beep. <laughs> but yeah, and then like the goat warrior body, like skin weighting, that was like, that was a lot of like back yeah. and forth as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can tell. Look at that beautiful skin weighting. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, nice. It was very nice. <laughs> so here's your, your favorite part. Is that fur? Part? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, so like texturing and fur. Mm -hmm. Um. So like this is like kind of like a diffuse map. Uh, that I did in Substance Painter. Um. So I I painted them kind of have like a like a fur texture on them, because like later mm -hmm. on um I wanted like to translate these color information onto like the fur shaders. So what you see the color here, they actually are like a direct translation from the diffuse map here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is just like some like grooming from Yeti, just like setting it up. Yeah. Like 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 doing the grooming in Yeti is also quite uh, user friendly mm. compared to XGen. But mm. like I think both can achieve like the same look. The same look and result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it different like 
uh, Yeti uses nodes or something, and then Yeti is like node based. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so if you're whoever was asking about the fur, if you're good with nodes, <laughs> Yeti to go. You're good to go. Yeah. I am definitely not good with nodes. Yeah, and then these are just some like groom tweaking. Mm -hmm. So like the the top is like what we had before, and then the bottom is how like the improved version, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Nice. And then there's like some <laughs> fur simulation, and these are just like some troubleshooting and stuff. Yeah, like simulation-wise, it, it's it's pretty smooth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is like the the red panda um, accessories uh, texturings. Yeah. So the cloth was also simulated. Yeah. And uh, he, you did that in Marvelous Designer, right? Like like modeling the cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all the cloth, they're done like half in Marvelous and half in uh, Maya. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like texturing and shading in um, for for the gatekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> How about that top one? <laughs> the top one is like <laughs> oh, man. got hit by a bomb. And then what you can't actually see in the film is that I think all the characters, or like uh, Gatekeeper and- Only the Gatekeeper. Only Gatekeeper, okay. Gatekeeper has like peach fuzz, which is like the small fur that you have on your skin. Um, but it's really hard to see in the, in the film. In the film. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they're coming <laughs> Yeah. And then the Goat Warrior's hairstyle was kind of also like half design and half we kind of winged it. Yeah. And then, um, so what Goody did, which, which is really cute, I think, is these little loops. So they're kind of like simulate, or like they're supposed to look like um, the goat ears. Is there anything like else? Oh, we got like a bun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That looks neat. Uh, Chloe has yeah. a question for you. Oh. Uh, was rendering yeah. the Yeti and the animation very taxing on the computer compared to the other, um, like, X Gen? Mm. Oh, that one you uh, should know, yeah. Yeah, I think they're like any kinds of like fur system is really like heavy on, on computers. Yeah. Um, mm. Like when we render it locally, like my computer can't render it at all, I think. Yeah. And your computer can like kind of render it. Right. And then, but most of them we have to like send to the farm. Otherwise, right. nothing will like happen. And then, right. and even when we send it to the farm, sometimes there's like some flickering mm -hmm. that happens. Yeah, like I think hair, like particles and fur in general, it's always going to be really tough on the computer. Right. And then the more hair you add, the heavier it is. So, actually, a fun fact is that the red panda's face has a lot more fur than his body. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah so true. that like, um, so it would be easier. Like we had to take away a lot of the fur just to make it easy for the computer to render. Yeah, because we don't, we don't have a big render farm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then like the longer, the longer it takes, because it was an independent film, right? Well, like in general, like the longer it takes to render, the more expensive it gets. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't want to like, like, yeah. give our life up for the render farm. So uh, <laughs> we took some of the fur away. And like, I'm pretty sure like we also like forgot to cash some stuff like we mm. didn't even catch our model yeah um that probably cost us a lot of like render time so mm. like it's it's like some we, we also made made quite a few mistakes mm -hmm. but Absolutely. yeah like it's it's like kind of like our first short film yeah yeah so like you know we we learned through like a lot of mistakes too yeah mm -hmm. sure yeah um c taylor smith has a question yeah. What made you choose uh, using Yeti as opposed to sculpting the hair? Oh, uh, yeah, like, um, that's kind of like one of our goal is like, we kind of want to have like this like stylistic and hash like slash realistic mm. uh, rendering. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think like if we have like geo hair with like realistic skin, it, it, it might look a little bit funny. Mm -hmm. um, that's yeah yeah but also um like fur and, and simulation was something that goody was interested in like to begin with so that was like modeling and fur right yeah. so that was that went together really well like if he wasn't interested in it we could have 
yeah gone for we, like geo yeah there was like mm-hmm. we were that was one of the plan b like mm-hmm. to go with like geo fur mm-hmm. uh, geo fur yeah 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 but like like because it was one of our main goals so yeah it really depends like some people really like geo hair the mm-hmm. cartoonist looking yeah you yeah. can definitely go go for that yeah 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 mm-hmm. i hope that answers the question yeah yeah it does okay sweet and then, oh yeah, it was did you want to say something oh sorry uh, just about like this one? some texturings oh nice some <laughs> <lip down. laughs> oh no that's we didn't want her to have like makeup on i think that's just something that went wrong with some kind of maps yeah <laughs> it's the goth it's the look. goth map <laughs> yeah what about the top left she gets stung by bees yeah oh and, and, <laughs> yeah. and she has a light bulb in her <laughs> oh there's there was a lot of like funny things going on with there was one where she had um instead of fur, hair on her head she had fur coming out of her face it was insanely disturbing it was very strange <laughs> yeah oh man a lot of troubleshooting too mm. like, yeah yeah but I think she turned out really nicely. And yeah. it's funny because um, I think one of Goody's screens is a little bit less calibrated than the other. So when you look at the film on one screen, she has like very normal skin color. And on the other screen, she has like kind of greenish undertone, yeah. which is really funny. But um, I'm asking how you textured the eyes. Oh, do you want to go oh, through that? The texture of the eyes. Um, we can play this while you're talking about it. So like, the ice i think was mainly like procedural um i don't quite remember but like um i just like grabbed like a few like existing um like eye textures and then just like map it around uh yeah sorry i don't quite remember how i did the eyes yeah but um there was like whenever you do eyes you do like two layers right uh, one one like glassy outside yeah and then one like inside for the color or something is that right yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and then um you, you have to like if you're going for realistic um, you also have to like look at the anatomy of the eye where like a lot of people think like eyes is like two spheres but like actually the the eyes is a little bit like where, like the iris bulges out yeah yeah it bulges out and mm-hmm. then yeah like you have to like also do a little bit bump mapping and then like uh Mm -hmm. like you're scatter out the the specular a little bit too Mm -hmm. yeah because your eyes is not like a glass it's actually have some like specular breakup right right and then you had like uh you had like veins coming out the back as well right yeah yeah yeah. so it's all like textured onto the eyeball so when you like look around you can see the veins on the side yeah yeah Yeah. didn't really yeah, cool. I, think, I think that was good. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so this, these are just like the character turnaround. So the final um, renders of the character posed, which could he also use for his demo reel. So you can tell, if you look really closely, you can tell like, um, it was difficult to, because uh, we have a lot of big armor pieces to let them not crash into the body. So sometimes they crash and we just couldn't do anything about it. So we just left it. Like the red panda's shell too, when he like arches backwards, his shell goes into his body, yeah. but it's a little bit unavoidable. So I usually try to hide that behind behind him. If he ever does that, it, he's not facing the camera while it's doing it. So now we're going to the animation part. So after he was done with his models, which actually we uh, we transferred back and forth a little bit. So while you were working on models, I used the work in progress, and then I'd update every time he did an update. Yeah. So kind of like what we're doing at work right now. <laughs> so uh, these are some of the 2D character models. So whenever I do a character, I do a turnaround. So it's easy for me to see them at different angles. And then this one is um, the sister. It's the same turnaround, just different colors for the lighting um, because she's in the rain in the, in, the, in the beginning. So we wanted to try it out with blue colors. Um, and this was helpful just to get like the angles because for 2D, it's always a struggle to uh, make the character look like it's 3D or like that it's moving in space. So that helped a lot. And then for 
the 3D part, after I got the characters, the first thing I did was do a couple of tests. But th this isn't the first test, this is like a few iterations in. But um, like, like walk cycle, like he's obviously scared in the new environment, so he needs to be like, have a really stealthy walk. So this is one of the tests I did. And then, what's the next one? So the next one is his quadruped run cycle. So we wanted him to be able to uh, be a normal quadruped, but also walk on two legs. So that's why we had the, also the crazy rig going. And then, um, this is like an earlier gatekeeper design. And it's also not a very good animation test, but um, I just, just basically checking if the rig works. <laughs> and then they didn't all turn out that great. We'll watch some of my worst fails ever. Uh, they're pretty bad. Just get ready. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it gets better and better. And I hope the one in the final film looks the best. So, so what we also wanted to do was um, in include 2D effects into the 3D. And so I did this test for the 2D effects, but we ended up, not, I mean, I ended up not doing a single effects pass for the 3D because I didn't have time to. So instead we downloaded a few and also Eddie gave me some more packages, which are really good. So I'm using all those to comp in for the final film too. So um, I'll leave the credits down below. <laughs> I hope these videos work. Is that what So these are going to be like breakdowns of um, the final shots, which I'll show the final shot first, and then I'll, it'll go through like all the different passes. So this is the opening shot where uh, Anna, the bigger sister, comes home and uh, sees Sunny. So the tough part for this one was uh, it took a long time because it's a long, very long shot and has a couple of layers in it, and then the background took a long time to uh, draw. So this is our animatic, which is pretty close to what the final one looks like already, which is good. So it didn't have to change too much. And um, my keyframes were actually done on pencil and paper. So I did the very old fashioned way with the light table, pencil and paper, cleaned it up in Harmony, which is a software for 2D animation. And then all the, uh, all the background is painted in Photoshop, and then um, I colored it also in, in uh, Harmony. Cool. Yeah. So this one is also very similar. It's a little shorter. Oh, oh. so loud. Can I make it quieter? Yeah. <laughs> that background is 2D or 3D? Because you mentioned you created a 3D environment at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So that was for Sunny's room. I'll show you. Um, it should be the next one. Yeah, this one. So basically, because I have that 3D, or not 3D, but that camera move in 2D, and then I originally wanted to use the 3D model of his room to rotate around it, but it, it would have taken a bit too long to, um, to texture it. So instead, I just rotated it in 3D and then like traced it a little bit and kind of copied it in 2D, if that makes any sense. So, um, like, basically this environment, I was going to render it out in 3D, but I ended up not, not doing that. So, this is the first transition from 2D to 3D, where we get introduced to Sunny once again, but as a red panda character. And um, for this one, we had to actually go through a couple, like here, we had to go through a couple ideas of how he will transition. So um, these are a few ideas, and we went with the last one that we will show. This one's really anime. <laughs> this one is the one we went with. It's a lot of camera rotation. And then here's like very rough like blocking for the animatic, which isn't that great, but um, it gets the point across. <laughs> and then here's like rough blocking of the animation without the camera move. And this was one of the first shots I tried to animate for the film, which was probably not the best idea because it's a little bit com more complex. So if I would have practiced on a few other shots, it might have been a little better, but 
it's good enough. <laughs> so for the 2D, once again, it's like outlines and colors, that's the, and then like environments and stuff. That's in harmony, right? You... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all in harmony, except for the, um, the initial keys, I did them all like on paper. Because like, for me, it's a bit hard to draw nice nicely in um on on like my screen it's a lot easier when i'm like have the paper in front of me and like because it has some kind of texture on it it's very i'm very picky about that but it just looks a little bit better i think and then if i just scan it in and then i can like it automatically converts your pencil lines to vector lines which is great oh, so you don't awesome. have, yeah yeah so you don't have to do a lot of like fixing which is really nice did you take textbooks or you scan yeah yeah so um it's like at our school, which was really cool, they had a setup for like stop motion. And then so what I did was um, I, I set the camera from top down, put lights on it and everything. And then I took the photos in dragon frame, which converts it into like either image sequence or a movie. And then I brought that into Harmony. Yeah, so it was actually photos, but they were like as good as scans because it's the, right. the setup was really, really nice. There's just a couple more breakdowns that I'm going to throw in. Yeah, I like, I like working on this shot because um, it was something I was, I thought I could use in my demo reel because it's like a uh, very straightforward. You don't need to understand the story to kind of, to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just body mechanics showing that this character, I know how to move a character. <laughs> I, I like to, usually I like to like block it out with like keys and stuff and usually those are stepped for me at least. I know a lot of people don't do it because of timing and stuff. It's easier for them to see if it actually is all splined out. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's um, personal preference. But also for big, for big camera moves, I suppose it's a lot better to do like with spline because uh, otherwise you can't see the character for part of, like, it'll move out of the frame at some point. So the next one is the, um, is the fight sequence between the boss and the character. So this one was a little bit difficult also because the boss or the, the, the gatekeeper, he has uh, four arms and I didn't really know what to do with all the arms. So I ended up not doing a lot with them, but Basically, they're all around the place, and it's supposed to feel a little bit claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. Like the red pen is trying to get through all this mess. So here's again the animatic, and you can see how the character design also changed. So the boss was like an older version, and then here I updated it to a newer version. And then another funny thing is his um, his uh, armor is actually like it follows his legs, but it doesn't have any secondary, so we rigged it so we don't have to simulate it. So it's also like animated to to look like it's simulated, if that makes any sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And I then, see, yeah? Steve has a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, which is unrelated, but to your shot, but he was just asking what was your most memorable ah. moment? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> your, your moment where it was, Frustrating. Oh, frustrating to do the animation? Um, I guess like, just while the film or probably, uh, probably both. Okay. And then making the film like... Yeah, yeah. I think like um, for Goody would be the, the, rigging. the rigging was most frustrating. Um, for me, it was probably like, I don't, I don't think I was really frustrated the whole time because you were doing all the hard stuff and I was kind of just playing <laughs> around with my little characters but um I know that uh some of the shots were hard because there was a lot of moving around and sometimes the 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 older version rigs didn't work very well and it was really hard to like place them and then this shot it was also like camera and care and two characters so I had to like synchronize it all it took a lot of iterations and um Maybe also a tough part was that we had a lot of shots in our film. So I think we tried to make the film a bit too long. So we couldn't focus on getting like one or like a couple like really awesome shots out of it. It was hard to uh, like, we had to like branch out our uh, 
time yeah. so much yeah and everything we did especially you had to do like so many different things yeah like we both have to like do a lot of different things mm -hmm. from like pre-production to like post productions mm -hmm. and then i think like that kind of ended up being like we we can't really finalize like, yeah quite a few things but mm -hmm. like, yeah yeah and then some things that we can't fix is like for example here you can see how the fur like crashes through the uh through the armor and that's something we just can't fix yeah. because we don't want to go back in and then like make them collide and then like re-render the whole thing because it would that takes a lot of time and costs a lot mm -hmm. so some things we just have to like let it go like oh, that's fine <laughs> just leave it right. and then and then we'll learn it for the next time we make another film then we yeah. can improve on it so i think that's a it's always like you want it to be perfect but you have to accept that it can't always be perfect like you you didn't know this thing before you have to accept it okay mm. for next time you know it then you can improve on it that kind of thing i think that was the like one tough part All right, yeah, yeah. if that makes any sense yeah um also another couple of questions which i yeah. think we need to get into anyway mm -hmm. uh, how did you reach the final staging of the shots did the storyboard go through a lot of iterations mm. Did you have any inspirations for the dynamic camera movements? Mm. Oh yeah, those are some good questions. So actually for the 2D part, I stuck a lot with the storyboard. So I did a, well, I did a, like a very rough storyboard and then like an animatic, which was like a black and white kind of version with like pictures moving around. So that one was already very accurate to what I wanted. And this is what I ended up doing, but for 3D, Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> like we did a storyboard and then I made it really nice, which was completely like, just don't make your storyboards nice. It's really unnecessary. And then I completely scrapped it. Like not a single board was taken from that storyboard. And then we did an animatic, which is like basic blocking out of every, every shot in sequence. So we can see it with like our earliest characters, which like it took probably until the very end, we were still changing shots. It was yeah. like insane. Yeah. We had the animatic, people like said they didn't know. Like one of the most important things, I think was because we had a lot of camera movements, we still needed to know where the characters are in the environment. So um, we had to make sure that they were consistent shot by shot and then that the camera doesn't always flip sides all the time so that we know where they are, know their relation to each other. And then, um, yeah, until like the, we didn't have one animatic that actually went <laughs> through to the end. Like every shot kept changing. Yeah. Yeah. I think if anyone is like doing a short film, I think if it's like a like student film or like an independent film, I think it's good if you um, just accept that things will change along the way and then don't get too focused or don't get too, uh, like don't hold on too much to your first idea and just... Um, kind of like rough roughly block it out and then work on it because it'll change anyway and then it'll look it'll look great because you'll you'll change every shot depending on what you changed on other shots if that makes sense yeah yeah kind of keep it organic on the yeah front. yeah exactly yeah yeah honoring the story more than anything yeah yeah and then also like don't don't get too um attached to your story i suppose or like don't give up so fast as i know a lot of people got really tired of their story at some point but it's just like you gotta push through and get it done and then you can like start a new thing <laughs> like don't give up too easily you can do it <laughs> yeah was that all the questions or did i miss a few uh, there was one on, did you have any inspirations for the dynamic camera movements? Oh, yeah. So funny, funny story, actually. Our teacher very, very strictly encouraged us not to use any camera movement at all. So like completely static cameras because um, because he was a layout artist before. And then he has a lot of horror stories about students doing terrible camera movements. But um, I completely disregarded that. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, it turned, like, I was going to keep a few uh, static cameras, which did not happen. I only have, like, two shots that have static cameras, I think. Yeah. Um, but I think it was mainly because our characters are moving a lot, so I wanted the camera to follow them. But, like, specific inspiration, 
I don't know. Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> I suppose like Kung Fu Panda is probably our main source of inspiration. Wait, uh, did you watch any other? Like, um, probably like a lot of the a lot of like this shot, this shot sixteen. It's a lot like a drone movement, like drone camera <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but also like when it's on the ground, it looks more like a like on tracks. So I wanted to keep it kind of real, real, like it could be a real camera, not like magic camera. But yeah. here it gets like now it obviously becomes a magic camera because it's like flying around. But I I can't say that I have like one. Like it's on a crane, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be. <laughs> yeah, it's not like flying off like you said, like a drone. Like yeah, drone yeah. Of a mountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, I tried to keep it as, like, realistic as possible, although it didn't always work, but, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I have, like, specific inspiration for it, though. Mm -hmm. Does that... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, just wing it. Just wing it. That's how I did the whole film. <laughs> so this is my current work in progress. Just go away. Because um, some of the 2D shots, I wasn't able to finish it, and I'm still working on them. Um, there's, there was originally going to be a lot more, but I took a bunch of them out, but I think I'll finish maybe two or three more and just put them in because it's, uh, I think it would add a bit more to the, to the relationship between the sister and the brother. Yeah. Yeah. And, sorry? Play it again. Play it again? Okay. <laughs> just go away. So you can see I'm working on the secondary of the hair and the coat. Mm -hmm. And then she's opening and slamming a door, but you can't see it right now. Just go away. No, it feels like she is. So I okay. She, yeah. Okay, that's great. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, yeah. So this one's also all, like, the outlines are in harmony and pencil drawing as keyframes. Yeah. And we're actually heading to the end of our presentation. You can ask as many questions as you like. So, um, yeah, this is one thing that you really wanted us to talk about, Eddie, which was a transferring from school to uh, our first job, which is actually really exciting. But um, I know a lot of, or some of you that are listening are Eddie students. And you guys are so awesome. Your guys' work is so cool. Um, and I, I don't think my stuff is as good as yours, so I don't know if I'm like supposed to talk about this, but um, I think I got very lucky because um, one of our students, she was a lead layout artist at Scanline while she was doing her final year at Emily Carr. It was because she, um, she got a job when she was in third year, and then she came back to university to finish her fourth year just because she only had like one course left and she really wanted to do it. So she came back a couple years later and did it. And uh, while she was there, she picked up a couple students. So me and Nicole, we both um, had an interview at Scanline and are both uh, hired there now, which is super, super cool. So I think I'm just really, really lucky. Um, and I met some really cool people that could refer me. <laughs> That's how I got into, uh, got into Scanline. Do you want to talk about that? In your transition to animation. Oh, um, do you want to say how you got into like uh, Icon? Like you yeah. also, Chow actually also got um, some tests for game animation, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I think that was like my first kind of interview. Mm -hmm. Like I got like a game test where like I have to like did this like um, game like game test in yeah. Unity. <laughs> And I was like, I never did Unity before. And then it was like, oh, you have to like do it, finish it in two days or mm. three days. And then it was like during my graduation ceremony. And then what else? Yeah, it was just a couple it things going, you know. Tough times. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. And then it was like, yeah. And then eventually I got like an interview at Icon. And then I also like was really lucky because like, Sometimes when I was working at Icon, mm -hmm. I feel like, or like you know, I don't know a lot of things that I feel like you should know. Um, but like I'm learning also a lot too. Like I'm feeling really lucky that you know like, I can be part of like I can be 
I, like I'm doing what I like to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, you're more interested in like doing films and versus game, right? That's why you took Icon. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I'm also a lot. I was from the beginning. I really wanted to do feature films, and um, that's why I was like so happy that I could get into I uh, not Icon, <laughs> get into Scanline. Mm -hmm. um, but also, uh, I was able to, because my dream was always to be an animator. Um, and then when I got the layout job offer, it was, it was amazing because it's already like very, it's very kind of linked to animation in the way that you're, you're animating, even though it's not the final, you're kind of like blocking it out or you're doing the camera. And then it's, but it's also a lot of technical stuff and you learn a lot about the pipeline because you, you get a lot of, um, files or, or or work from other departments and then you have to like um, do your part and then hand it off to other departments so you're very much in the center of everything so you learn a lot about how the company works and then also you get to know a lot of people which was great because then I was able to transition kind of like I'm still in the midst of transitioning into animation which is really really awesome yeah yeah and I want to add like you keep saying like you're you got lucky, but I think it's not just luck. You also showed that you know with your demo reel, Berthy is with your demo reel. You have the skill and the knowledge to um, show that you're capable to fill that role. So that's why you were chosen. Like it's not just about luck. It's about being in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, yeah. Right so I think. Uh, I think you put it on luck too much. <laughs> yeah, well, really talented, and, um, you know, and to transition from layout to animation, which is what you've done, is it, you know, it proves that. So. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, thank you so much. Yeah, I, you talk too highly of us. <laughs> We're just um, we know a lot of cool people who help us out a lot, but. But it, it is also a lot about they they can tell that you're interested and that you work hard and mm -hmm. want to do it. So I think that's also why they're willing to take you on, at least for me. Exactly, okay. passionate. So. Mm -hmm. um, and willing to learn, yeah. For sure, yeah. But now there's a question for you. He's going to jump on the webcam. Yeah. Hi. Go ahead. Hi. Hello. Ah, this is beautiful work. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, I I just want to know uh, for the characters you people animated the uh, for the characterization uh, how you people studied like that goat warrior or the mm -hmm. pandas how you people uh, work for the characterization of the characters like their personality or their character design yes. personality, uh, personality. Oh, okay so we always knew that um, the red panda was going to be a bit more like a bit more scared and shy at the beginning. And then when he starts fighting the uh, the monster, he gains a bit of um, gains a bit of like, what do you call it? Like uh, uh, courage. courage yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the sister character is always was always supposed to be like more like protective, so she's a very strong character. So when she enters the when she enters the game from from when she enters the game, you know the she's not scared at all. And then and then the um, gatekeeper is actually already like pretty much done after he, she enters yeah he's pretty mm -hmm. much like he's pretty flat yeah yeah and then the gatekeeper yeah he's he's a pretty flat character he's just big and bad that's basically all he is but the the one that we really wanted to focus on was the red panda that he actually goes through a little bit of a character arc throughout yeah. does that make sense yep cool no and uh, another one, the reference you people studied like for panda or the goat warrior what kind of reference you studied uh, for that for their animation or for um yeah for animation yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so for the so, right right for the goat warrior actually it was very tough because um i haven't i don't have a lot of like experience animating um quadrupeds in 3d um so i did a lot of uh horse references actually because i couldn't find a lot of things with goats except that they were jumping around but most of the horse references I took was horses carrying like big heavy things like pulling carts and stuff because um, first of all she's holding that big cannon and then she's she is on top of the horse herself or like she's like on top of the goat body if that makes sense so she needs to look a little bit heavy or her lower body needs to put a little bit more effort into it 
And then um, for the red panda, like um, it was mostly <laughs> it was mostly Kung Fu Panda reference. But we also like she also watched a lot of red panda like videos. Like, yeah, videos. yeah. Uh, but it's it's funny though because red panda actually has a really long body, and they always like they kind of just lounge around, and then they do a lot of cute things. Oh, Are we done? We log- I think we logged out of you. Hello. Oh yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, hear you. Oh yeah. Well, maybe they're gone now. <laughs> but I think you got that Kung Fu Panda reference. Um, yeah. And thanks for the question, Pranab. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Just look at other stuff. Look at other movies. Look at um, you know, like uh, realistic creatures and. You just, yeah, because other movies with the same characters, they've also done research so you can see what they've done. Um, and then you can Hello? Just, right? Hello? Hey, you're hello. back. Oh, hello, we're back. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. You decided to join us. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't want to answer your question, <laughs> so we left. The best way out of it, really. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking. But uh, I, I, I couldn't hear what you said in the end, but um, basically that was... We like I don't know if you heard the end of what I said, but like uh, the we took a lot of reference from the red pa- the real red pandas as well, um, except that it was tough because they they don't do a lot of action that we have in our film, so they're very uh, relaxed and very playful, but not very uh, they don't fight a lot. <laughs> they don't do kung fu. Yeah, they don't do kung fu. Unfortunately, <laughs> they're um, very cool though. Yeah, thanks, Pranab. Thank you. Um, Swen asked if they, he or she can get your autographs. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> We're not worth that. Um, wow. Jesse I mean, asked, can you wish you knew or wish someone told you as a student? Something that we wish someone told us as students? Yeah, or wish you knew. Oh. So what you know now and what so much. <laughs> a student back in the University. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's a lot of things that I wish us like we would have learned. Um, but I think one big thing, especially for making our film, one thing that was very important that we learned afterwards is that you like you don't have to do everything in your film. What you can you like you can you can take rigs from online or you can like download assets, you can buy things, you can use this, you can use that. Because everyone puts their work out and they're they're more than happy to share it with you. So if you ask them for permission, like, can I please use your design? Then they'll usually be like, yeah, that'd be great. And then you can take their design and use it. You don't have to make your own design. And um, so that actually, yeah, that actually uh, like slowed us down a lot because we really wanted to do everything ourselves, which was completely like unnecessary. And then we like, our focus was um, a little bit spread out, which we should have like focused on one thing only. And um, yeah, one thing I think, that um, university is different from like those one-year programs where you get really focused education and in university you get more like broad education and you get to learn a little bit of everything which is great because you get to find out what you want to do but also on the other hand uh, you, 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 no one tells you that you need to focus on one thing after you're done if you want to like get a job in the industry unless you want to do like independent filmmaking then you can do everything yeah yeah is that why you guys use Kickstarter? Um, just to help with, I guess, extra extra hands, extra artists to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That was the main, the main goal for our Kickstarter. Because we had a few um, <laughs> ideas about like where we might need help with like um, uh, prop modeling, environment modeling and stuff. But a lot of the money ended up going to the, um, the mm-hmm. render farm. Yeah, yeah. that was right. expensive. <laughs> but like we uh, we also hire uh, voice actors, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, com- uh, composers, mm-hmm. yeah. and and sound designers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like it, it's also fun to work with like those people. Oh yeah, that, absolutely. Like, we have like one really good voice actor. Like he's like just like yeah. You know. Oh, that was really cool. Can I uh, can I just brag about this voice? <laughs> we had okay. All three of our voice actors are amazing. Two of them are our friends, which uh, one of them was like our junior and one of them was actually in our class. And one of them was, it was so random, one of our teachers referred us to him. He is actually a DC actor. So we got him to voice act our monster character, which was like, 
Oh, it's so cool. So we have to put his name up everywhere so everyone watches it. <laughs> DC in DC Comics? Uh, no. DC the movies. Like, no, no, no. How did he do a DC... I don't know. What you're <laughs> from. Like, we saw it on his IMBD, but we have to, like, we have to, like, research it. You do, again. like, some series and some movies. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which is, yeah, yeah. It was That's awesome. Uh, William... Uh, do you have it? Wait, I have it in my... Um, I have... Oh, look at me. Wait, I need to share it. Screen share. Can you see it? Wait. William Defoe. Here. We should have... Um, William Hopkins. Oh. That's his, this one right here. That's his name. Oh, yay. So you guys can uh, search him up if you're interested. <laughs> but yeah, so that's a few... Like, do you have anything else that you oh. wish someone would have t told you? Well, like, <laughs> one thing that I realized only at at the end of the, my school year was mm -hmm. like, you know, like, you can't expect your teachers to, like, teach you everything, you know, mm -hmm. like, a lot of time you have to, like, do your own research, mm -hmm. uh, take a lot of online classes, mm -hmm. like Griffin Academy. For example, <laughs> Griffin Academy. Uh, <laughs> like, <Right>. download, <laughs> download tutorials, mm -hmm. yeah, like, because, like, in second year and third year, I was just, like, expecting, like, okay, like, my the classes that that were offered at my school is basically what I'm gonna learn. Um, yeah, like if if I could go back in time, then I definitely would like start taking a lot of classes mm -hmm. in second year and third year, just like from online or tutorials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially if you know something specific you want to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there, I guess, that transition from. I guess you kind of answered it, but that transition from uh, graduating to getting your first job, there's a lot of students are still working on their reel, trying to yeah, like yeah. get into the industry. Um, mm -hmm. is, there, is there like a, one bit of advice you guys would give? I mean, you gave some good advice just then, but just, you know, that extra, that extra push to just get mm -hmm. there. Um like regarding demo reel i think you've probably heard this a million times everybody but uh i think it's important if you know what you want and you know what the company is looking for to uh to like cut down your reel to only the best of the best and then like it doesn't matter if it's just like one shot if it's like amazing then they'll definitely reg like consider you more than if it's a bunch of like kind of like not so awesome shots does that is that am I accurate? <laughs> Eddie, yeah. can you confirm? I, okay. I think so too. Yeah, it's all about quality of what you're showing. And mm -hmm. then now ask for more shots from here. Um, mm -hmm. But it definitely uh, hinges on just a couple of really quality shots. And yeah. The opening shots. So if you mm -hmm. attempt, if you can like blow them away with your first two shots, then they've already decided in their minds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, I think... Sorry? Hello? Is that a question? That sounds like a question. Harang, what are you saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Hello? <laughs> are you okay? Yes, I'm just outside right now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Did you ask something? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, uh, like, yeah. Another thing I want to add is, like, uh, I think, like, timing is also a little bit important. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, like, if, like, at, like, like, right now, like, the, the, the company is, like, looking for, like, like, people, mm -hmm. and then you're applying at the right time, and then you have like a decent portfolio, like that might just like increase like your chances of getting in. Mm -hmm. Like you might, it might be like three months of not getting a job or like half a year of not getting a job, but suddenly like this company mm -hmm. is looking for animators or modelers and then your reel fits their style, then you know, like the chances of you getting in is a lot higher, mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then one thing that Eddie also told me is that if you're, if you want to, if there's something that you want to do more than what you want to do now, 
you have to like prove yourself and then also like keep uh like keep trying and like don't give up trying because uh, eventually you'll you'll get there like for example yeah. getting to animation <laughs> yeah so like going on to what Diddy was saying um the right time is important but in between waiting and getting to the right time the right timing of applying you need to working mm -hmm. on you know, your demo reel shots your skills your yeah, your knowledge so when the time is right to apply you're ready so in between that you have to be practicing and you have to be mm -hmm. working you can't just yeah. wait for the right yeah, time yeah yeah absolutely for the right time so and that's where comes into play as well you're lucky mm -hmm. prepared, right mm -hmm. yeah no that's absolutely true yeah yeah and then i think like it's you have to always like refresh yourself with like like when if you stop working for a long time it'll always take a lot longer to get back into it and then like remember things that you learned before or something like that mm -hmm. you know, or like just your work ethic goes down really hard if you just chill <laughs> too long as yeah. As we know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chloe has a question. Is there anything that you learned making this um, or making this film that you would do differently if you were to make another short film? Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, we learned like, okay, I think I learned, I, I learned very, very much from this short film. Almost like most of like what I know is doing this short film and running into so many problems and doing so many iterations. It really helped me like learn a lot about animation, learn a lot about pipeline and about other things. Um, but one thing is um, you like we didn't keep our story really short and we didn't keep our like scene or like our um, what do you call it our environment very small. So what I think I would do differently is probably keep everything in one environment and then keep the story short and like it's like it's like to the point but also has like some kind of meaning right like this one was more like oh beginning middle end and everything was kind of built out really far and it was a really long story but it doesn't translate so well into a short film like it's a little bit confusing here and there but if you can make it so that everything is really concise that's i think that's the best that's the best yeah mm -hmm. anything you want to add? Oh, um, yeah, like pretty much the same, mm -hmm. but like, uh, after I working at, started working at, uh, like Icon, mm -hmm. I also like realized, oh, like there's so many things that, that I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then like, for example, like how a company organized even just their files, right. simple as like naming stuff, mm -hmm. like, you know, like it's really important to like. If, especially you're doing a short film, it's really important to keep everything like really clean, mm. files in the right path, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. And then also one thing is like, you learn that there's so much you could have avoided. Mm -hmm. So we were like, oh, we really want these big armor and this and that. Yeah. And then of course it'll all crash because it's all ginormous. So it's all, it'll, like it's obvious it'll crash into the body. And then yeah. versus like, what Goody was telling me with Icon was uh, like there was very, like one specific um, uh, example would be like there was a character with a skirt and then they had a long skirt in the beginning but that would crash too much so they just say well let's cut it a little bit so then we and then all the problems like went away so like that's the kind of things that you can you can cut down on some things if it'll cause you too many problems in the end I think just get rid of it it'll be easier yeah. yeah, and no one will know because they don't know your previous ideas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Are you guys gonna make another film? You think? Or are you gonna push this one along? And yeah, what are you gonna do with this film? Actually, that can. Yeah, be yeah. So uh, this film, uh, we're still finishing it up. So uh, I think you could tell that some of these scenes they are not finalized, or they don't have like atmospheric like smoke and stuff. Some of them are completely missing the environment, but um. We're gonna finish it up, and then hopefully we can submit it to some festivals. And uh, I want to do another film, but I know you probably <laughs> don't really want to do another film. But uh, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe I'll convince you with a good idea. <laughs> I can do so much. 
yeah. assets mm. built. <laughs> but there is like, we do want to do like, instead of film, we might want to do like smaller projects that are not really film, but it's like, we want to mm. make a, like a CG double of our cat bubble tea. And then uh, <laughs> we want to do some like very small shots, like, oh, like it jumps on the table or whatever, or, yeah. or they yeah. meet each other <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or something, yeah. you know, like live action and, uh, and the CG character mixed up together. Yeah, yeah. but like, like, yeah, like, uh, Making a short film is fun. It, yeah. Yeah, but like, if if I'm gonna make another one, um, I kind of wish that we have like a huge ass team, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. Everyone like doing the the parts that they love. Yeah, and yeah. It, that that's gonna be fun. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Like we, they. It's also important to like find people that are just as passionate as you are about the idea and about making films. Because, um, like, the bigger the team is, the harder it is to coordinate everyone. And then you like, run into a couple, like, like miscommunications and stuff. Okay. Yeah, but also, like, just just knowing that some other artists are willing to give you their, like, prop models. If, yeah. if you can add them, right? So you can always um, try to, like, ask people if they are willing to participate in your film. Even if they don't have to model something new, like, we could just take their prop model and or like um and then credit them or download their assets and stuff mm -hmm. yeah 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 so mm -hmm. i have a question um for both of you individual um and if anyone else has any questions we'll probably take the last few before we let them go but for alicia how did you find going from i guess your short film animation style to vfx and for goody mm -hmm. do you ever want to work in vfx <laughs> all right so yeah for me it's actually um so you can tell the animation is a bit more cartoony i would say it's a bit more cartoony um so uh also we had to pump out a lot of shots very quickly so uh, the animation is kind it's like it's like there and it's um it's like it's moving but it's not really like the final small details are not there or there's some things that definitely could be improved if i if i got more feedback and put more time into it uh, so that's one thing I know that um, I'll be working on a lot with Tom when I'm training for animation um, is to um, get to that final stage and going through different iterations. And I know like in VFX, you need to, you need to have a lot more, um, like things need to make a lot more sense. Physics needs to be there. You can't just have the character flying up sideways and it's fine. Like it has to like somehow make sense because <laughs> also a lot of other elements come into it like there's always effects and stuff which a lot of our film is kind of cheated it's like oh it looks fine in the camera okay that's cool but we don't have a lot of effects and then like what happens in vfx is that um you're handing your stuff off to the next department which when they do their simulation or they do their motion blur or something and the first frame is not moving the second frame is moving a lot like it's all gonna go like insane so um like small small technical things and then uh, just, I just need to learn a lot more about how to animate. That's the biggest difference. You're a great animator, so you're doing wow. fine. No, that's, you're just too nice, Eddie. You're just too nice. <laughs> but how about you? Do you want to work in VFX? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's like <laughs> something that I really love about. Like, I love movies mm -hmm. like, since I was a kid. Like, my dad always, like, used to take me like to like movie theater to mm -hmm. watch like blockbuster movies. Yeah, yeah. So, like since I was a kid, I was like like in, like influenced by that. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, like VFX is definitely like an industry that I want to like mm -hmm. get into. Yeah. It's one yeah. of your like big goals, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I think uh, I probably have to like update my reel, like keep working on my reels. Mm -hmm. So like. Cause like as as we mentioned before, like you know, like different companies want different kind of demo reels, mm. and then so you kind of have to like focus like your reels based on which yeah. company you're applying to. So yeah, like I definitely need to like update my reels. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, you also want to make a demo reel um, um, based on where you want to go as well, like what yeah. you enjoy. So if you want to work on quadrupeds. For example, uh, you would just build quadrupeds, right? Um, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be 
you know, you want to start building lamps because one company asks for lamps and then you become an expert at lamps and then you start. <laughs> <laughs> so you really you want to like yeah you gotta you gotta um just go with with your heart essentially you know mm, yeah, um, yeah absolutely no that's 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 true too it, yeah you want to do it for the next 10 years 20 years or whatever so mm -hmm. unless you love lamps then go ahead <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, that was one of the things, like, people always ask him if he wants to get into rigging because he was really good at rigging. Like, he, he made the rig really nice and everything. But Chow didn't even didn't even make or touch a demo reel for rigging because he was like, I'm not getting into rigging. Like, yeah. Something that he doesn't yeah. want to do at all. But, yeah. I don't think my rigging skill is also that good. That's what advanced skeletons for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to let these two go and get on with their lives. Uh, <laughs> well, but, there's two J's. Uh, oh, no, no. I was just, um, I was just go, scrolling down the, the name list. Mm. Uh, so, Jesse and... The question. Jesse oh. and Baby Cat? Is, is that Alex? Or? Alex, are you also here? Oh, so many people. No way. Oh, hey, Ed Wu. Ed Wu, it's Ed Wu. Do you know Ed Wu? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. If, I don't know. If Ed Wu actually heard this funny story, but um, the the uh, IT guy came into our room and was looking for Ed Wu and thought that Eddie was Ed, and then it was very funny. <laughs> it was funny. Um and. Both uh, Jace's uh, watching it from the from the desktop. Oh. <gasps> so both of their nicknames are Jay. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> both of the Jason. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one is which, but um. Ask a question, Ed. If he's there. <laughs> How about Albert and Alvin? Do you have questions? <laughs> 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 Nobody wants to ask. It's okay. If they don't want to ask anything. But Ed Boo said he has a question. Oh, he then, does. And then yeah. he vanished. And I think maybe he's typing it. Or, oh, okay, or, okay. Um, oh, we have two questions. One from Jesse. Oh. Did you just say anything about your moving camera shots after he advised you not to do them? Oh, sorry. Can you read that again? Uh, Jesse asked, did your, did your teacher say anything about your moving camera? Oh. Uh, camera <laughs> shots after he advised you not to do them. Oh, that was funny. Um, like... He advised us not to do it and I knew about it, but I did it anyway. And then I explained, or like I had good reason for why I wanted to do the camera moves. And then um, I think our teacher like knew about it and then he, he could see the good reason too, right? So he didn't say, like he didn't scold me for it or anything, or it, he, it was completely acceptable or he accepted it, right? Yeah, he didn't like, say anything about he, it. Yeah, I think like, like he thinks it looks, like achievable mm. it look it makes sense mm -hmm. but it still went through quite a few like iterations yeah yeah and then also with the with the camera um it wasn't like it was hard for me to do it with like a floating just maya camera because they kind of like it's it's easy to make them look cg because they're just like floating out there in the middle of nowhere so what i did was I actually had a camera rig with a with a it's actually it built into maya which is great so it has um a, a locator that shows you where it's looking and a locator that can tilt it or like like do a roll so what you yeah. can do is you can animate where so it's aim. sorry it has an aim yeah 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 exactly so what you can do is you can animate the aim to where you want it to look but also the camera itself and then it'll look a lot more like yeah. realistic yeah. because it's actually like locked somewhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not just like everything is floating around and looks terrible yeah, yeah. it's like it's constrained to where you need it to be. Without exactly. Having, yeah. Animate. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, bas that's basically it. <laughs> um, this is Ed Rue's question. Uh, since you guys are part of the younger generation of storytellers, <laughs> do you think the form will always be passive or more interactive? And which one of the two is more, is of more interest to you both? Um, um, 
what what is more passive or active? Um, the form of storytelling. Yeah, since you guys are part of the younger generation of storytellers, so uh -huh. do you think the form of storytelling, um, I guess short filmmaking, would mm -hmm. always be passive or more interactive? So I guess maybe like as we as technology develops, right, um, right, VR will play its part. Got it. Yeah, um, yeah. Glasses, things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh I yeah, no, it, yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely hope that there's going to be more interactive stuff because I also really want to um, work on something that's a bit more interactive. Um, I think there's always going to be the the like the standard big screen kind of uh, film, mm -hmm. but I think there's there's already a lot of things that are um, more. It's like short films, but also it's an installation. So you can actually go there and experience it, which is really cool. Or like on your phone, you can, uh, it's like a AR. So you can like watch the film and look around at the same time. So there's a lot of different um, things happening, which I, I hope will be like explored a lot more. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that was a very good answer actually. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad it. I that was made sense. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I missed out on the. Uh, <laughs> the <whole thing. laughs> That's not Ed Wu. Oh, it's not even Ed Wu. What? <laughs> no, start his name right. It's Justin. Uh, it's <laughs> the the T uh, the oh man, what do you call it? The not TD. Yeah, IT. <laughs> IT. There you go. It was something with a T in it. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, he's the one that Bubble Tea really likes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he has like ragdolls, right? No, no, that was the that was the other one. Uh -huh, okay. I'm really, I'm confusing him a lot with everyone at work. <laughs> 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 All right. Cool. Um, if anyone else doesn't have any more questions, I will let these two go. All right. Don't yeah. don't be forced to ask questions, but we're always here. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, guys. That was. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for inviting. Amazing. me. That was fun. Here. I I really hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, that All was right. great. Make sure you let us know when you, you know, finish the uh, the film and when it's out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll we'll, uh, we'll link some. I think we'll link some things somewhere so that uh, anyone who's interested who watched the webinar can go back and watch it yeah because i like some of the videos are laggy for you guys right so yeah. in case yeah. you want to watch it again we can like link it or like if you guys have questions mm -hmm. you can also ask us like on anywhere facebook Face instagram everywhere yeah youtube yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah yeah cool and yeah thanks a lot don't, don't forget to check out griffin animation academy it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> so many good courses <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, it's true. All right. Cool. Yeah, thanks guys. That was uh that was amazing and Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank thanks you. everyone else for attending. Um, yeah, thank you for listening to us and babble along. Thanks for yeah. <laughs> Say good day to bubble tea for us. Oh, oh just give me a second. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Where is we? We're gonna drag bubble tea. Right bubble tea. There's a there's a bear in the background. That's uh, <laughs> it's a big wait, wait, wait. Do you have the can you see her? <laughs> hey baby. Are you sleeping? I think she's still asleep. Is she sleeping? Oh no, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> she's really like tired though. Oh, I just woke her up. <laughs> oh <laughs> she's like so Asleep. Are you yeah. half asleep? <laughs> oh, baby. Here you go. Now you're awake. She's like, why'd you wake me up? Are you awake? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> she, she looked pissed. Oh, are you annoyed? I'll put you back. <laughs> Have the rest of your churu. She loves this churu. Oh, here, here. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh. oh, it tripped. Oh, well. <laughs> it's all right. All right. All right. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Bye, guys. Yeah, thank you for attending. <laughs> uh, yeah.
see everyone soon. Bye. <laughs> see ya. See you, everyone. See ya.